So, hey everyone, so in this video, we will try to solve a problem called as event emitter, which was asked in number of companies like Meta, Microsoft, TikTok, Flipkart. Okay, and you can find this question in the big front end dev as well. So that is the environment that we'll try to follow today and it will be a good practice for those who have watched my previous lessons on arrays. Uh, so you'll try to learn a lot of new things today. Uh, even the usage of proper data structure to solve this problem will be pretty interesting. So let's just dive into this. So. If you see uh, in this problem, we are asked to create an event emitter. So event emitter is nothing but it is an API which will be ha which will be called like this. Okay. So we have seen while creating a node in the linked list that we used something like new and then the name of the class or the function. So this from this we can derive that we have to definitely use either a function or a class to create this emitter API. So let's go and first just create this class. Okay, which will be called as emitter. Now if we see our first thing that the usage of the emitter is done like this that is emitter dot subscribe event one and callback so what does this question actually mean right so this question we have a event right to which this emitter can subscribe to and whenever the emitter emits that event right at that moment whatever callback that has subscribed to that event needs to be called right so think about it like uh, for example, there's a video player, right? And that video player is gonna call some function, right? When the video is ready to play. So what we do is we go and subscribe to this event name called as player ready, right? And we give a function to that. That is a callback. Whenever that event is called, okay, the, by the player, all the subscribed callbacks, which had subscribed to that event will be called, okay? So try to understand this problem first because that is the main key to solving this. So what the, the first API that we need to create is definitely a subscribe function. So we can see that the subscribe has two parameters that is event name and the callback. So in this, we have a, another API called as emit, right? So emit, if you see, we have been given an example, it will be called like this which will be like once whatever the event has been subscribed earlier can be emitted like this. And this will also call the callback one that was registered earlier with that event. So this actually accepts all uh, the event name and the parameters or the arguments which you want to pass to that callback, which you had registered earlier. So what we'll do is that we know that this will accept an event name and some arguments. In JavaScript, all the arguments can be collected like this. So we use a spread operator and just spread all the, all the arguments that can be coming in this. So now the first job that we have to complete is to complete this subscribe function. So as we know that we had used earlier a constructor, right? In this constructor, we will create something, right? Which we think that can be used to store these information because let's say we can subscribe so many things, right? We can subscribe a number of events and all these events should keep a track of its own set of callbacks. So we have to think of something like a map, which will have the key as an event name and the corresponding callbacks, which can be stored as a value for that key. So we'll not try to use a map data structure of JavaScript, though it can be used to solve this, but we'll just directly use an object and see how the time complexity and performance is. So we know that we have to, uh, one property of this emitter one variable of this emitter will be a map kind of thing. And in JavaScript, object can be used as a map. So we can just create a property that is this dot events, okay? And this will be a object, which will be empty earlier, right? So in this object, what we can do is whenever we subscribe, we will push a key for the event name, okay? And there will be an array, okay? Corresponding to that key, which will store all the callbacks related to that event name. So earlier, this is empty. Now, as soon as we subscribe to this event, we check, Okay, that is a proper key for event name already there. If it is there, then, then uh, the array has to be there and we'll just push it, push this new callback. So what we'll do, we'll do a check that if the events, okay, and now how to check dynamically whether a key is present in that object, we will use a square braces. If not, you're not familiar with this, please check objects in JavaScript, read it from js.info. So we use this event name. So this will check that whether we have a proper uh, key in this or not, right? So if there's a key uh, present over there, it means that there would be an array. Okay, we'll check that when we'll run this program. So we will go and access the value. So this will give me whatever the value is. So for example, I'll write over here, it will look like this. There is an event one and there will be some array holding the callback. So if this array already exists, our job is to just go and push this callback into this array. So we'll go and push. Push is nothing but inserting a new element into this array. 
will push this call back. So this does the job, but what if in the else condition, we'll have to check that if it is not there, if this, if this key does not exist, then our job would be to create this key with an empty array. So what we will do is we'll just go and events, event name, and it will be an empty array, but we know that this is our first subscription. So it will just hold this first value. Okay, so there are two cases over here. One is that there is an already uh, existing array, then we will just go and push it. And if it does not exist at all, then we have to create an array and push that callback as a one entry. Okay, so I hope this logic is very clear. And this is a simple uh, implementation of subscribe. We have to implement another small feature as well, which we can touch later. Okay, so now let's go to the emit thing. It's as simple. So whenever you emit an event name, you go and find that entire callback that had registered with that event event name. Okay, so we go and check that whether the events queue, that is an array, has something in it. Okay, so if it has, then we know that we have to take all the callbacks, okay, that had, that is inside that array and call them one by one. So let's, why not like store all the callbacks, okay, in a variable. So we'll go and store this inside this. So this is an array, okay. So if callbacks has, exist, it means that we just need to uh, loop over this callback. So if you don't know, we can use a for each loop or a for loop, whatever you're comfortable with and call all these functions in this array one by one. So we'll go and let's say we will create, um, for simplicity, I'm just using a normal for loop and we'll go and till the callbacks uh, length, okay? And so we are just iterating over that array and we'll call each of them. So we'll just go access that one callback and just call it. Okay, so there are multiple ways to do it, but let's stick to that this for now. So we know that this will allow all our callbacks to get called. Okay, so let's try to also run a little bit of this so that it's clear that what tests are failing. So I have logged into this big front end dev. You can also register and sign up and just start using it. So you can submit this code. Uh, okay, so I think the name of this is event emitter, is it? Um, okay, let me try this. Yeah, so let's see what tests are failing and what tests are passing. So we know that we have a subscribe function, we have emit function. Emit is also calling the callback, which is a pass test case. Same callback can subscribe for the same event multiple times. It has It is being handled by this method, right? So think like uh, multiple times I can subscribe to the same event and it will just go inside the queue, okay? So that's not an issue. What else? Emit should relay the arguments. Yeah, this is important. So I didn't use these arguments, right? So what we'll have to do, we'll just go and pass all the arguments over here. Now let's again submit the code. Now we see that that particular test case has passed. Now let's try to implement, implement this release method. So what is this release method doing, right? So think like uh, I have this, right? But what if I want to just reset all this earlier subscription that I had made on this particular event, right? So this subscribe function, actually uh, returns an object called as subscription, okay, which is called by sub one or whatever, right? Sub one, sub two, and sub three, right? So this sub one can, this subscription, you can just call a release method. And what this will do is that whatever subscription is this, right? It will just delete that. It means that next time when we call this event again, right, this event one, since we have released this, this will not call the callback. Okay, it's like you have to do some modification in the queue to remove that callback. Okay, so what we can do, right? We can just go and delete this particular callback, okay, from that queue. Okay, that's the operation that we will do. But let's see how to do this. So we know that the subscribe function is definitely returning something, right? So we go and return. Uh, so and what is that? It is an object, right? Why it is an object? Because we know that it is being, it is calling something with a dot operator, right? So we know that the release is the key of that object that we return. So we go and return an object over here, right? And we call this release, right? So this is an object, release is a key. And what is the type of release? We are calling the release with an argument, correct? So this is a function. So let's try to implement a function over here, right? And the job of this function is to delete that particular callback, right? So this is like a function inside function. Don't get confused. Just go and practice this. It will be very clear. So we know that we need to take this callback and delete it from the queue. So we go and check, right? So we always perform these null checks that whether this, uh, whenever you are releasing it, right, there is an entry inside your uh, events map, right? So 
you can't just call release 100 times and expect it to work right so we have to always check that whether this dot events and event name okay whatever event name it is exists right so we go and check this first so if it is existing we know that now we can proceed further to go inside that registered array okay of callbacks and delete that particular callback so we go how to delete an element inside the array right we will go there's a method called as splice okay in array which you just need to pass the index of the element and it will just remove the uh, element from that array it's not very performant but it will work right because you need to find that element linearly and remove it as i told you in the last lecture removing this and then sifting all the elements it will uh, it will be a linear operation but let's go right so now we'll try to improve that but for now let's try to delete one element that we want so what is the index of that element right so we know that let's also take this entire thing in a callbacks array so that we have a one variable to refer less confusing so we have this callbacks and we find the index okay and there is a very good method okay which will give you i think i think this is it maybe but we can quickly check whether uh, how to find the index of an element inside javascript okay so find index of uh element in arrayjs okay so yeah it's find index method so we go and just do this right so this will give me the index of that element and i just go and delete that particular item okay from the callbacks array okay and you just need to pass how much elements you need to delete so if you read this removes the element from the array if necessary inserts it but if i'm passing the second parameter it means that it will delete okay so i'm passing the delete count as one now you need to be familiar a little, a little bit with these apis so that you can work effectively with arrays right and that's why i'm trying to uh, help you with this question so now once you have deleted this right what if right uh, okay i think i think this is fine right so we have just removed one element but what if the entire callbacks is itself not there right or uh, think like mm, so this index has to be there and you have a callbacks so all right all right now we have to let's add one more condition over here so you, you will keep on deleting items from this callbacks array only when there are items right so why not add this condition that if the length of the callbacks is greater than zero then only we can perform this kind of operations correct if it is not then we will go and just delete if the entire thing is empty correct uh if the entire callbacks array is empty we will just delete the entire key from the map so to delete any entry in an object we can use a delete keyword and we will just uh, events and event name so this will just remove the entire entry of that event from the object so let's now try to run it and i'll try to see there could be a problem all right yeah so where is that event emitter emitter is not defined release yeah so try to see this thing right we are using a general or a normal function over here and whenever you use a general or normal function the value of this would be the object okay with which it is being called okay so think about this we just called sub one dot release so the value of this inside the release function would, would be this sub one object which we are just returning right and this object that we are returning does not have this events method or this events parameter uh, property so now the thing is that this this should be always pointing to the outer event emitter object and that's where we want to switch to a arrow function right so this is a very important concept and difference between the general function and the arrow function that whenever you use arrow function the value of this is not taken from the invoker of that arrow function but it is taken lexically okay from the outer scope so this is pointing to the event emitter again i again tell you like this is a pretty tricky concept so please read about it a little bit and i'm thinking to make a video if you are not comfortable so let's submit it again okay so where is the emitter uh, not present right okay yeah so this is all we have to delete it right so now let's again submit it yeah so i think i think this did the job and even i think that if you would have used a normal function it would have failed okay takes a lot of time i guess it runs a lot of test cases but it is gonna throw error because there is no events key in this when you use a normal function right as you see some tests have failed okay 
as you can see there is no property of event and all so you need to switch to a arrow function to make this working so i hope you like the video and we'll keep there's a lot coming on this channel and just be ready for it so there's more data structure lessons coming there's more big front end dev questions coming so uh, my suggestion would be to watch all the lessons in series in sequence and try to grasp whatever new comes on your way so thank you